Crouch. Bind. Set. Joe presents the House of Rugby, together with Guinness. Good evening and welcome to the House of English Rugby. Tonight we're going to be talking about all Ireland's failures, how I perfectly predicted that they had no plan B, and basically how they're now fighting for the wooden spoon. Is it fair to say, hello and welcome Mike Tindall, that your wheels have been spinning furiously since Saturday night to get into it on this show? Um, it's been, it's, I've been actually battling with my moral compass and my fuck you compass. <laughs> and, uh, and which I, one's winning? I, well, they, they are actually having a ding dong of a battle at the moment. And I think I'm going to stick to humility because it was only the one game. And I'm going to say, uh, you know, Ireland could have a bad game, but they do need a plan B. How much of a struggle is it to it's, be it, to be hanging it, on the humility well, uh, when I was right working at the, in, the, in the green room on Saturday, I did quite a good job of containing it. Uh, I was with Anna, Alan Quinlan, who yeah. had... Um, I did one of their podcasts off, off the ball yeah. uh, in the week, and I said they'd asked me the question about how many Irish people would get into that England team. And I said, look, that's a really difficult question. If you look at the matchups, England have got six British and Irish Lions in their forward pack. Um, and then... a, a they obviously then put that on social media and it said, oh, Mike Tyndall talks about how many Irish people and under, would get in the England team and under, or English people would get in the Irish team and underneath it said, listen to this, it's absolutely ridiculous. So I then tweeted... Well, this was put out by the official channel, yeah. not by a punter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So then I obviously rep I replied on Sunday saying, not too ridiculous today, is it? No. And then they tweeted me directly going, unfortunately, that was about something else. We've just, we've just been... We just haven't put... We've put the wrong tagline on. Oh, that old chestnut. Video. Blaming the old um, I technology. I think generally um, did think it was ridiculous, but, yeah. Well done, you. You call it right. Well, you, no, know you, said, was, you know what you said before? Like, oh, I'm going to go nuclear. I didn't think you were going to go like that hard. I like it. Well, I, you know, I, th I think... I would never go to Ireland I, again, but I like where it, you had it, it, <laughs> it was difficult. You know, I had, we had Fergus McFadden and... Uh, and uh, Jamie Heaslip come in before the game, and they were 15 points. Ireland were going to win by. Did so you? I, yeah, but you can't have thought England were going to win by 12. No, of course not. They, they did you think England were going to win? I, I, in a sneaky feeling, I did. I, I, I did have a gamble, and yeah. I took England on an outright victory, um, at three to one. Yeah, uh, you've also gone Scotland race. for a Grand Slam, though. So you're spreading your no, chips no, no, far no, no, and wide no, 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 on no, no. the. Uh, I've done a value bet in the fact that they're 25 okay, to one. All right. All right. So uh, you know, if they win, if they turn Ireland over next week, that is going to be absolutely slashed, and we've got a Grand Slam decider at, at Twickenham. But yeah. um, so uh, it was. I did think that they could turn them over, but I thought it was always going to be tight, and I generally thought that if England came and played the normal rugby that they've shown in, in Dublin, that they would lose. What I didn't expect was that performance. what appeared on the field. And I just have to take my hat off to every player on that field. It was outstanding. Got to love it. Um, welcome, everybody, to um, the House of English Rugby this week, brought to you by Joe, together with our very good friends at Guinness, who've even sent us a little prize to enjoy. And David Haskellhoff is back from the beach. I am, thank you. you. wearing a bit of a tan. I am, not tanned enough. Where did you watch it? I watched it in a bar in, in London. Oh, so you actually. were back for the game? I was doing something for the Telegraph, yeah. Yes, I came right. back for the game just for, to do a bit of work. To you said my that teammates. you wrote that for the Telegraph without actually seeing the game, I thought. No, no, no. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> I was there for the Telegraph at the Tank and Paddle, actually, doing something for them, which was nice. Uh, you know that... Good you, pizza? You, yeah, very nice. Great pizza. It was a pizza and, and mm -hmm. uh, thing, so I'd recommend that. Anyone? Nice macaroni and cheese as well. Sure. Um, Went through the entire yeah, menu. The menu. Of the <laughs> well, they just gave it to me and it served up. There was a sure that's not on your macro list. It was a day off. It was fine. <laughs> um, We've got a lot to talk about. Um, but first of all, you, you didn't play this weekend? No, no. I played last, I played last How weekend. How was that? Delightful. Do you remember, I got do you remember which way to point and, and face? I did. I got 15 <laughs> minutes off the bench, um, which was I could have done with longer, if I'm completely honest with you, but it was nice. I think I got. How, six, how was the ankle feeling? Six, it was right. got six, six carries, something like that, a couple of tackles. Short, you know. Training this week? I'm training all week. I, Are you an angry man in training at the moment? Mm, no, I think, uh, you know, Tins will tell you that after a while, you lose that. I have that, always have anger. I'm just mm. quite an angry person, but you don't. <laughs> Particularly you, today. Yeah, yeah, you don't go, oh, well, not as you, you were ruddy perturbed a minute ago. <laughs> that, that, in his house, that's, that's like him dropping the C bomb, saying, I'm pissed off. You're going oh. to you have to put 
pound in the naughty jar. They blur, do, um, fr- it's going to be a frustrating few weeks, isn't it? Because you've got to try and get yourself back in yeah. the team. You, you know, if you're not you're not necessarily going to be. You know, a few of the guys are playing well yeah. in that back row, aren't they? So yeah, and that's that's the thing. It's just you just got to bide your time. You've had eight weeks off. You want to play, but angle wise, I, I don't have a problem with that. And I, obviously, you train because you want to be better all the time. But actually, it's not like. When you get a young player coming in, like I remember what Marrow used to be like. Oh my god! Oh my. Day like week one of his England camp thing, he was like going super naws on yeah. everything, and it was like honestly, it was like Marrow eager to impress. No, right. you just you just don't know well, the level. Yeah. So so we don't, you don't have a gentleman's agreement, or but you just don't go completely insane. Like yeah. you just we're doing like a tackle drill. You don't try and end the bloke, or if you're going to compete, you don't you don't like. You don't hold the bloke up. I remember Marrow first thing we were doing something, and I went to place the ball. I casually ran into him, thinking this would be fine. Yeah, but he just like folded me up sideways, <laughs> threw me on the floor, stole the ball, tread on my head. I was like, Marrow, just calm down. Now, obviously, he's been involved a while. Now you see, but then yeah. there's some other young kid who came in. Did he irritate people when he when he arrived on the scene? No, no, because he's not like he doesn't have a demeanour. No, no, but just in terms of the, the eagerness and the oh, keen, yeah, yeah, the keen we, yeah. A few lads would come yeah. off the field going. Oh, God, some of these lads are so keen. <laughs> like, I remember my first English session, literally my very first English session, went in, tackled someone, got back to my feet, stole the ball, must have been the first, and um, I remember just hearing this fucking noise, and as I stood up, I just got punched in the face. And I looked up, and I was like, ready to go, and there was like Martin Corry, there was... Um, uh, Deacon and there was uh, someone else and I didn't know who to hit so, I, so and then I realised it was Deke so I was like right okay he's just welcome before Leicester so the next thing I did the same thing stole it and took the ball away and I was like right, come on then and that, play. Was, that was play on but well, we did nothing big time. ever happened but, but for some of these young guys you are like oh there my god there is always a test match <laughs> yeah, yeah literally every training session is like he's playing his test match right Dave Ribbons is test match at, um, yeah. at Saints like, I remember one of my first sessions with him he, he like doesn't Who, have Dave Ribbons uh, second row um, rib I would call him. Oh my God, you know something about rugby. You yeah. don't know something about yeah. rugby. Yeah, he's a very, very good player. Like right. I think a future England uh, plays South African. He? Uh, he's only 23. Okay. He's 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 very good player. He's been outstanding for us. And um, I remember we were doing like pick and go drill into bags, and you're supposed to like set it up. You know, like run in, hit a few people, come round, fold in, hit. And I remember I literally was standing there with this bag, and he just ran straight into me, bowled me straight over onto my head. <laughs> and I was like, Dave. It's supposed to be like on like you know like fifty percent contact. Tag so then we do it again, and then we play shoulders on, which is obviously like you just got a good good healthy grab. Same thing, five meters out from the line. <laughs> I, I right, you go up, you put a bit of a hit on, and then take it. He just bowled straight over the top, and I was like, right, this is it. Ne- next time, <laughs> next do you time. get it back? No, because the session ended. <laughs> but I've never forgiven him. I, there's always that one bloke. So we, he's test match. He's our test yeah. match player. Both of us was like that as well. D- just just didn't have anything other than ten out of ten. No. Lewis Moody did. It's funny. I can see the learn... admiration in your eyes as you as you recall. Well, I'm all about. I, I remember Brad, uh, Brad Barrett was a bit of a noise like that as well. Yeah. And I did. I remember doing one on one tackling drill, and I and I was fully in the arm, armchair training mode. And it was like a oh, nice tackle, and he purposely dropped obviously opposite number, like compi- competing for that spot, and he dropped the shoulder on me. And I sort of slid down his leg and held onto his leg, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> and then instantly your mindset changes, and you're like, right, here we go, don't forget. Yeah, yeah. But Brad Barrett was the only person I know with a touch proof, touch proof shirt. Like we play, we play touch, and you just touch him, and he just wouldn't stop. <laughs> you'd be like, I, you'd literally like touch, it's touch, Kevlar, touch, touch. Like Honestly, it was non-stick Teflon cell. Hey, those you, shit, those. Honestly, for the best for, was, a, for a guy like me and Brad Barrett, tries in training, it was countered. You know yeah, what I mean? Or, for me too, but I, I can't do that. You know, when people like you, you get touched, just keep running. Yeah. He would honestly get touched, knock someone over, and die for a score. And you'd be like, Brad, you, you got t- 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 touch fifty meters back. Yeah. Oh no, I didn't. And do like, the coaches let him play on? Of course or, they do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah so, untouchable. Because because coaches want you to have a balance. Coaches always go right. We want you know healthy grab and everything else. And then when someone runs through, it's then your fault well you didn't played, ramp it up. Well played. And you're like, well, hold on a minute. <laughs> if you're not going to referee it, it's going yeah. to be full on contact. Yeah. Well, we need more. Well, then let's just do full-on contact. Yeah, yeah. Stop pretending it's something yeah. else. Every coach does it. Who is the biggest Noors, you can pick one, you've ever played with or against? Are we talking in training, just, or just Ooh. generally? Uh, <laughs> you can take either. It's an open question. One each. <sighs> the, big, the biggest Noors. Um, Where would you rank in that, in your early years? Early, oh, big Noors. Yeah. Yeah, I remember Paul Volley wanted to, to kill me one time, um, <laughs> you know, um, and then I, yeah, that wasn't great. I think I told him. Why? Because I, 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 I think I tackled him or something like that when, 
or just again it was uh, uh, people were going like 50% and I went like 80% or something so yeah. everyone everything you've just done the younger yeah. generation for you were yeah yeah yeah, yeah. On the same I, I think, pretty I think at some point <clears throat> there's always you've a, you're it. always going to be you walk in and you want to do everything overexcited yeah I'd say the biggest noise we, we ever had was a guy that doesn't play anymore a guy called James Dunn who used to play at Wasps back in the day and he used to get DRIs Dunny related injuries <laughs> where you he had we had to have a separate club that. insurance yeah <laughs> <laughs> tell, BRIs. What was, what, what, we had DRIs and BRIs <laughs> in the line out you'd lift him at the front right he'd punch you in the head on the way up <laughs> knee you on the face elbow you on the head on the way down land on your foot and then you'd li- literally be like ah on the floor and you just have to shout out to the physio DRI DRI there was a separate insurance policy uh, to pay for him we used to yeah with Buckos <laughs> Peter Buxton exactly the same uh, with no intent completely not a nose but he would at least cause three major severe injuries a year we're talking like literally, literally we are playing touch with and this is where Ryan Lamb was literally off the scale. He was so important to us as a 10 (coughs) and we're playing touch and Bucko's like dived at him, somehow landed on his ankle, literally (laughs) fully syndesmosis his ankle, snapped the ligament between, he's out for four months and literally we're like, (laughs) fuck Bucko. He's like, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Next rocking rocking drill, literally, bang, (laughs) Clara. It's like, Bucko, get off the field. I remember... Doz was telling me when he played at Gloucester that when about the, the BRIs when you used to have a breakdown so in a game there'd be like two Gloucester players two of the opposition he'd run into the breakdown <laughs> hit the breakdown 100 miles an hour come out the other side of it and all four people would be injured <laughs> for the whole time they would be all in pieces and then uh, we literally it was, like it was like, unbelievable it yeah. was unbelievable the carnage he caused Peter, uh, there's a guy called Peter Bracken who used to play for yeah. Watts as well he was still, I yeah, remember, but he also injured people through his smell, didn't he? Yeah, he did, yeah. His hygiene was not on the top, top priority list. But um, <laughs> he, uh, he had, I think, the best thing where he, where he used to injure people in training. But my favourite Peter, uh, Peter Bracken story is that before against, against Sale, or normally because Lawrence was, you know, so commanding in the change room, no one else spoke. <laughs> but Peter Bracken piped up before this game and started going, oh, Lawrence, you know, I've heard all about you before I came to the club. I haven't seen you. You know, you haven't, you haven't turned up Called for him us. out. Called him out, right? So right. Lawrence was like... You know, the jaw got bigger and bigger, the chest got bigger and bigger. And everyone's like, oh, my God. I'm thinking, Peter, you better have a good game, mate, because you've literally talked it up. It's like, Simon Shaw, we, I've not seen it. I've not seen you, Shorzy. Lawrence Delalio, I haven't yeah. seen you. Right, got real fired up, went out onto the field, first 30 seconds, sneezed. <laughs> his eye popped, <laughs> almost popped out of his head, came off after two minutes, did absolutely nothing. Oh, and it was amazing. It went off because he, 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 he honestly sneezed and his eye... Um, it's quite confusing sometimes when you have those chats because they, back in the old, old days when I was playing for Bath and you used to do Thursday nights, first team versus second team. And if you basically wanted to play on a Saturday, you just went out and maimed, and maimed as many numbers. people as you could. Yeah, And, and, I, and I think uh, the year that uh, Andy Robinson was in charge, we went on this horrendous like losing streak. I think we lost 13 on the bounce and it was literally got to the point. And I was a young, young, young guy, quite quite happy to share my emotions and I was like this, this is ridiculous all we do is kick the shit out of each other in training but yet when we get on the field we act like pussies and like call that a few of the old guys so Ollie Redman literally lost it and then this is a guy who I saw once hanging up his jacket to go out before a game and he dislocated his shoulder <laughs> like and he and he sort of moved it he went back in and he turned around and I was like and he went Went, really? went out and played this guy he had 40 operations after he retired but <clears> I'd obviously got into it so that Saturday Steve, we were playing Gloucester and Steve Ajomo was over the ball and, I, and his eyes had gone right I need to sort this problem gone in literally head first on back of Ojo knocked himself out complete spark out, <laughs> out, for like, <laughs> out for six weeks and he blames that on me and I was like oh, oh, well, sorry about that sorry about that Te- first said maybe you need to just adjust your technique <laughs> First interview I ever did was with Ollie Redman in Bath. Nicest bloke in the world. Nicest bloke in the world. Absolute legend. And I was 22, quite nervous, Bath fan back in the day. (laughs) And about 17 seconds into the interview, one of the lights exploded and set fire to his carpet. (laughs) (laughs) And we sat there, he and I, me about to ask him. And he literally just had it laid. And I've never seen a man quite as cool as the sort of the flames began to grow. He sort of looked at it and the cameraman furiously stamped out. He said, 
guess I'll be buying me another one. <laughs> 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 that was it. Oh, Absolute that. hero. He, uh, his training techniques, he used to do body hardening. So in the off-season, he'd be in the gym lifting and he had this little Japanese friend of his. Well, like Kato and um, yeah, yeah. Spectre Li- Clouseau. Li- literally. So he'd be lifting weights and this guy would be whacking him with a stick. No way. Yeah. I, I thought about employing like a Kato type character to jump out and <laughs> keep life exciting to jump out and test me all the time. I didn't really no. understand. Like, Danger! <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm like, ah, heart, I'm getting old. I'll tell you one thing though. Can, about I, those old school can I at some point just go on, last one? It's just my favourite thing. You know, talk about the body hardy. I'll never forget one of my first England sessions. John Wells was the coach at the time. I was like, right, warm up time, grab a ball, hold on to it, and you have to get the ball off him. And I, and I was like, okay. And I, and I held the ball, and the lads would come up, and he went, no, break it. Fingers, I was like, This is a warm up. This is a warm up, you madman. And they're like, No, we don't, you're just too soft. I was like, Break his fingers, grab it. I'm like, jo- Wellsy, Wellsy, this is a warm up, man. This is two, this they is 2007. No they yeah. have no Le- honestly, Leicester Tigers, that uh. was a normal. That was a normal thing. Break your fingers to get him off the ball. I was like, have it. I was like, have it. Have it. I'll buy you one. Have a wasp. I don't want it. We don't want it. We're not about that life. We are 20 minutes into the podcast. Oh, we've off done the back that. of that was, that was one of England's greatest performances in the last 10 minutes. years. That, that was a strong And all we've discussed minutes. so far is fuck bucko. And <laughs> I actually genuinely want to get some t-shirts made up. So we've got Xing Shong, Flip Flop yeah. and fuck bucko. You know, um, uh, we should have some merchandise made up. Um, we should. I tell you what I want because, by the way, anyone who watches this, everyone else, they've got a lovely piece of paper. You've got a notebook. If anyone makes cool notebooks, can someone get me one, please? Because I don't have one. I feel left out. I don't feel like I've got any notes. We need something embossed on the front. Yeah. I might have something for you at home. I might bring you another lovely. one. Lovely. Okay. Perfect. Connections. Just ask this one. Connections. Well, this is a Matt Hampson Get Busy Living. Support that charity. Good. What a good ledge. Yeah. What a ledge Matt Hampson is. So we better talk about some rugby. We, then, we should have Matt Hampson on the show. We should. Yeah. Yeah. I would love to do that. We should. 100%. Um, what, a, what a superstar. Um, do you want to talk about the weekend? Uh, of course I do. Okay. Um, how good were England? Where did it come from? Who impressed? What the hell happened? Um, it was unbelievable. Uh, it really was it unbelievable. It really was unbelievable. And that's. Uh, I don't think uh, I would have struggled to any team to deal with that. The, their intensity, um, that defensive performance, obviously probably the best since 2013, uh, New Zealand. It was, it was 12, was it? Uh, it was just incredible. Their whole demeanour, they they just came to mix it up and everyone, literally everyone played out of their skin. I don't think there's one person you could say, ooh, had a quiet day at the office. Yeah. It was, you know, the pressure, everything they needed to do, the pressure they put on Conor Murray, uh, kicking time, I, thought, I read some, Jono said he kicked well. He did not kick well. He box kicked away, but they were all so sure that even if they did win it back, it didn't matter because there was they were just swarmed by another England onslaught, and then they would chase them down again. Um, it just took Ireland completely out of their comfort zone. When have you seen Johnny Sexton look that flustered yeah. in terms of having no options and not for the first time ever? It didn't look like he could slow the game down and pick what he was doing, and that was just down to their line speed. Now a lot of people have. Have sort of linked me into a tweet and saying they're offside. Everyone always says no, that no, with line but, speed. but I do, I do think it's a thing that's not penalised enough because now every team plays a high pressure D pretty much get yeah. off the line, and I think there are a lot of teams that still live offside. But it's the same for every team at the moment, so I think refs re- refer it the same way. But um, you you live with what you get away with. If they if they get pinged, then they get pinged. If they don't, they don't. But it was just incredible, and there wasn't any of the wingers stopping. Like a couple of whether Mitchell's changed something, they used to go up hard and then at some point stop. They didn't do that. They just carried on right going, and, and it just got played into the into their hands. And it just got. I don't think obviously Ireland not a bad team overnight, but they just didn't. I mean, it reminds me of a complete flip flop of two year, two years ago when England go there for a Grand Slam, yeah. thinking, and I'm and I'm doing corporate and I'm saying that England are going to win by ten, and literally just didn't see sort of that performance coming. And well, actually, I did that day because I tried to tell Dylan that it was going to happen. But, oh really? Um, well, well, why? Be- why? Because oh, almost that day, <clears throat> Ireland had nothing to play for, which means they want to spoil the party even more. If yeah. they'd have, I think it was Wales the game before. If they'd have won that, and then it'd have been a Grand Slam decider. Yeah. Then like a three. It would have been completely different because they would have had 
pressure on their side, whereas they just had to go and absolutely ruin England's party. I think it sort of came across as that feel that everyone was expecting Ireland to win. No, I'd be harsh if I said that I thought England were easily going to win. I thought they had a chance, but I thought it was going to be close and probably edged it to Ireland, said, suggested Ireland were going to win. But they just came out to spoil a party and just and they did. It, yeah. was, it was incredible. Did you see it coming on Saturday? Did you, had you got that sense from anyone in the camp? I don't, look, I don't want to sound... Um, I think we've got to be pragmatic about all this stuff. I think, you know, it's very easy for everyone to get carried away and overexcited. I think the one thing I felt is that England were right up there with, you know, with one of the best sides in the world, that 2018 wasn't an accurate reflection of where, where they were. I don't believe in you know, going up and down with you know, hyperbole or buying into what the press say or buying into what people say or questioning it. I, I didn't believe that. I was very confident that England were going to win on, that, on, the, on, the, on the weekend because I know how hard they work. I've seen firsthand you know, all the stuff that the armchair pundits and commentators and fans suggest needs to be worked on has already been thought about. You know, if you're sitting in a pub and you've thought an you know, idea or you, you've picked holes in England's setup, that's already been recognised. You know, there's a big difference between identifying problems and trying to work on them and get them out on the field. Um, and Tins will tell you, you know, no side ever goes out there to play badly or not to, to underperform. And I had every confidence that England were going to win. I didn't think it would be um, the margin it was in the end. Yeah. Uh, I think that you know Ireland for me are still you know probably the best Northern Hemisphere side. Um, you know because of, because if you look at results and consistency, I talked about it before the game that it wasn't just about winning this game was going to who's going to win the Six Nations. It was going to a place hostile environment. It was trying to a battle of wills, a battle of uh, psychological elements trying to win dirt at all costs and I think England showed now they can go to a place under a lot of pressure and perform and that's cash in the bank that is really important for a World Cup Ireland have showed that against New Zealand a couple of times they've showed that against other sides yeah. so you know I, I always believe England can do well people who write England off or people who get so excited that we're now going to win everything or think Ireland are terrible you just got to ignore all that you just got to be level-headed and all I know is that I see how hard Eddie and his coaching staff work I haven't worked with John Mitchell but that defensive performance for me was, was was incredible and it's something that I as a player would have liked to be part of because as Tin says everyone to a man was incredibly physical people were getting stuck in they were hitting there and you know hitting everyone and Ireland for me you know they thrive on that kind of you know, intensity go, intensity that gain line when, every time I've been there you know we talked about it before you, 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 you go out for the, the anthem you sing your anthem that tiny man comes and puts a spell on you and then and then you have two Irish athletic anthems and suddenly you're Talk under horrific Irish president yeah, yeah. Under, <laughs> under horrific pressure yeah. you know and it's a terrible place to go and play I love the Irish I love the Irish fans and players but it's a very hostile place to go and play and I think England from those first few minutes flipped it on the side they, they dismissed everything and just went Do you know what it's about us you could see the game plan was very clear that they actually showed, I think, a bit of a plan B for me. Tactically, they, they, they changed what they were doing, kicked a lot more, kicked to put pressure on, uh, you know, that, that do or die defence. You know, we always talk about putting pressure on nine and ten because Johnny Sexton often gets an armchair ride because, you know, Connor, on the front foot. Yeah, yeah. Because Connor Murray kicks, kicks so well. They compete very well in there. He's on the front foot. But Johnny Sexton, you know, the whole thing, you could see boys shouting, I've got Murray, I've got Murray, I've got Sexton, and putting pressure on them. And then when you've got a 10, he's looking. Because ultimately, 10's more, more a fulcrum than, than anything else. If he's looking and he's suddenly got English people in his eye line, it's, it's a hard, it was a hard day. I, 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 yeah, I think, I think it was incredible. But I, I just genuinely believe that you've got to have some sort of level-headedness about what you're doing. But I, I would never write England off. I wouldn't write them off in 2008. I don't, I've never written them off because you, cause I know what they're doing. You know, if I thought for a minute they were a jolly or they weren't developing or they thought that their ways were the best way and Eddie wasn't watching every bit of footage flying around the world, getting his coaches to fly around the world to talk to other people, onto the players every week at their clubs, then, then you know, that's what makes the difference. Yeah, I, th I think, you know, you, you can't... The way I thought about it was obviously it's the first time probably in a eighteen months he's probably had what he would class as a first yeah. choice fifteen out, and then for them all to get that intensity right. I mean, if they play with that intensity, they'll be very very hard to beat week in week out. Obviously. We so that's my question: is he said in the aftermath, Eddie Jones, this is the start. We're going to get a whole lot better. I mean, how hard is it? to maintain, to improve, to reach those levels for the rest of the tournament? Or is that now, should, should be achievable well, because they've, they've, look, they know what they're doing? Your, idea, your ideal situation is to go out and produce that every week. 
Yeah. And if they do that, they're going to be very, very difficult to beat. But, you, you know, Ireland aren't a bad team. They're not. And it's funny of how fickle that sport is. That You're not turning it around. No, no, no. Flip-flopping. No, I'm not at all. Don't start. No, no. All he does, if you but, listen to that but, but, everyone flip-flops. I, 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 I sat, had lunch with an Irishman on Sunday, and he's like, well, yeah, actually, Conor Murray hasn't been playing that well. And it's like, well, hang <laughs> on. Amazing. I mean, it's just amazing. how they. I think, I think are, from an Irish perspective, they literally would never have seen that coming because no one saw it coming. Yeah. And, you know, does it highlight, you know, uh, Rory Best afterwards said it's a bump in the road and then what you've got to figure out is do, do you figure out how to solve those bumps or and move on or, or are those bumps going to set you back? And I think, you know, not to say that I have hindsight and I am a scholar of rugby, but, you know, I said about plan B yeah. and do they have a plan B? And... You know they really struggle to then. So what should they out. have done? Well, I think on Saturday, because they, well, they lost the gain line, they lost the physicality. Everything was running away from them. Yeah, How do make, you wrestle make, a game makes back? It, it makes it very difficult to then change change the wheel, especially when you don't have. We've heard all week. Joe Smith runs a very very strict uh, game plan a structure, and if you basically fall out of that structure, obviously we had the chat with Zebo, yeah. you suddenly get pushed to the sideline and you've got to stay within that. So then how do you then switch it around? But they've never experienced that. So from a, a, a coaching perspective and a player perspective, they are going to have to address it. And then what they could have done, I'm not entirely sure. When you're coming at that line speed, whether they could have done a, a better job in terms of not just boxing, doing some different sort of kicking over the middle, leaving, you know, trying to just turn England a little bit earlier and yeah. a little bit better. But they were under so much pressure. Uh, it was it was difficult. But interesting, really interesting as well. I think first half, from what I remember, absolute rugby noise. It was n nine penalties to one. Mm. You know, to it, it, you yeah. know, England giving away nine penalties. Ireland only had one. And ordinarily, you know, if you look at the England New Zealand game, I actually think that England for, for 50, 60 minutes they brought the same intensity in defence. Yeah. I, th you know, that was the last outing they had, and for me that was a benchmark in defence that we hadn't been to for a, for a, for a long yeah. time. And I think, uh, but New Zealand still found a way to win. Yeah, I think through our indiscipline, through the collapse of a of a line out, and that's where you see those in. So I think you know, Tins is right that Ireland, you know, they will find a way, and I actually think it's probably, however difficult it is for fans and people to understand, it's actually probably a good thing that they lost. Uh, from an Irish point, because they'll just go away and work on that and they'll develop that and they'll know, actually, listen, if we're dealing with unbelievable line speed, do we need to kick earlier? You know, do we not need to play less rugby in our in, in our half? Do we need to go back to a boring a boring situation? Or, you know, but but I don't think England, you know, for England, they could have easily, with all those penalties in the first half, could have been could have well, been behind. Well, they, they were behind. So, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, yeah. but, I mean, that would be one thing England would go away from and go, you know... The curry yellow card, you know, is it? I'm not. I watched it back and went, "Is it really a yellow card?" But it is nowadays in this in the game that we play, and it was completely unnecessary. Mauro Toji was just what happens when you send a second row up to try and catch a ball. I don't think there was any intent. I don't think it was a yellow card. Uh, he's, he's quite good at keeping his toes right on that line, though, isn't he? Yeah. Would you... Well, no, I would have given you... You would definitely... Oh, a red, red card, yeah. But <laughs> is, is he... I'm trying to think of a sort of a, a comparison. He, a bit like McCaw, in that he is now getting very good at getting away with it. Yeah. Mm. Is, he, is he developing that element of his game? I I, listen, I, I think it's a, <clears throat> if there's a, a miracle recipe to develop that side of the game where you can do shit and then not but get But there caught. are some players who get away yeah. with it. Yeah, I, yeah because people who don't wear red scrum... Red scrum running around. I think, yeah, I think Mario plays... I think, look... You know, you've got to, on the right day, on the right kind of situation, you know, common sense prevailed on, on that point. You know, I think, uh, you know, to, I've been there exactly where Tom Curry is. You know, you're, you're, you're uh, over many, many times. Many times, over -eager. I think if he finishes that tackle off properly, he wouldn't have got yellow carded. It would just been a penalty. Are you sure? I thought it was the, late, like, the lateness of it. I just no, think... But I just what, think happen, look, what happens if that guy throws a d dummy was... kicks and then goes inside and he's, he's like, pulled out? And he yeah. Just, I mean, it's, you're talking... If there's more than two steps, then you have an opp opportunity to pull out. He literally kicked the ball and it was one step hit, but he just didn't finish the tackle off I, properly. Yeah, I mean, I, I just, I, you know, I think it was one of those unlucky things that, 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 that happened. I, it, just it's now, the you've, game. Got, to, it's the game, you've got to be so, yeah, you've got to be so squeaky. But I loved it when, um, 
you know, I, I mean, I, I, you know, Johnny Sexton's a mate, but I, 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 when Courtney folded him up from uh, the side, you know, I love Courtney because I thought he, his uh, impact off the bench for England was, was yeah. awesome. Mm. I think he's in the form of his license, that, yeah. that Lions tour. I think he was, he, he's, you know, uh, for such a tall guy, you know, when you see him like uh, sort of side on, you think, Bloody hell, that guy's quite tall and skinny. Then he turns <laughs> and he's just broad yeah, shoulders and he just sun. absolutely ends people. And he, now he, he, you know, he, I thought his cameo was amazing. And I, I always get into him though, because his highlight reel of hits, if you look on YouTube, is him just bullying people with small tens without yeah, the ball. Yeah. They've never he got did the ball. Power <laughs> once for Northampton. Yeah, I mean, yeah. hit him into the state, yeah. out of the stadium. But he but does bang that big. Was, well. That was, uh, I actually wanted Courtney to start to be literally in. Johnny well, do you, so would you start him now against France? With I, don't know, I don't know how that works around scrummaging in terms of do, they, up, do they need a bigger man or nah, do they it, need Courtney, Cruz Courtney. on there? Or no, I, don't I think, know. I think Courtney, the thing is with Courtney. Would you do Courtney and Cruz or what? The launch on the bench? Launch, yeah, I, 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 got, launch I, in there? I think launch, you know, launch has obviously come back from injury. I thought you know, he, his first game back was outstanding. I think you know, he's, he's a guy that's unlucky to have missed out. Yeah. I think uh, for me... The way Courtney's playing, you know, before everyone talked about his destructive tackling, I think actually... Oh, he's it, in the best form. His ball carrier. That's, that's what I mean. I, I foot, know. His footwork in terms yeah. of moving, moving around. Sinclair again was awesome. Yeah. I love Sinclair. I love how he winds everyone up. He's yeah, my favourite. Who would win a scrap yeah. between him and Omani <laughs> if you put that, the gloves on? I don't know. I've never seen Sinks. I've never seen Sinks. I like Sinks the fight. reaction. See, I, yeah. I, I, I You're think. Stupid. Yeah. <laughs> You're stupid. I think uh, Manahi would win the long battle. Yeah. But I think if it came down to a, a quick Raw knockout, power. I think Royal yeah, but Power Sinks, Sinks, just, Sinks never, never, anyway. doesn't ever fight. So the best bit is that he like wound up uh, Jerome Kano so badly on that Lions tour. That what pi- happened at the end of that second test? Oh, because he, actually he didn't come out of that that well. So the thing, no, the thing is, it's right. We got to remember is that uh, first of all, Sinks is a lovely guy. Yeah. He he is actually, um, you know, like uh, so kind like of, a lovely guy, but a psychopath. No, no, no. Yeah, he's like, just we a lovely were guy. About angry man but on off the field. He's the other a, day. He's, no, but he's a lovely guy. He's like quite softly spoken. He cares a lot about what he does, but he's he's just. You know, sometimes it seems a bit too cool for school. But he's what you got to remember is he's watched and watches continuously hours and hours and hours of NFL, hours ah. of NFL stuff. Like he doesn't understand. He knows everything. He's like an encyclopedia. He watched the. You know, he. he I said to him, "Sinks, I want to watch some of the stuff." He sent me all these clips of like the Browns. You know, the defense, uh, the Bears, uh, all these kind of famous defensive outfits. Are you having a little look at the NFL. No, no, not for me to play. No, no, no. no. We might have no, a little I'm exclusive well there. I can't get into the Saints side, let alone get into the into <laughs> get something else. Saints Academy to yeah. the New England Patriots. That would be unbelievable. Call me if you're interested. Mm. Um, I can hit people hard. That's about it. Um, and he watches all this stuff. So then he gets so hyped up. Like I remember in the first, one of the first line sessions, he made unbelievable break, line break. Because he's, you know, he carried off he's something. He's a baller. Yeah, he shouts and he got the ball. And he just ran through it every time, baby, and just threw the ball up in the air without <laughs> scoring it. Everyone's like, "Sinks, the fuck are you doing?" And so what happened is he was trash talking Jerome Kano, and everyone got so upset about it that that uh, everyone was like, "Oh God, Sinks, shut up, Kano's going to tear your arms off." And all the other boys were like looking at him like, "We're going to kill you." And then it was all like, it, it, and, and every time it like. Um, it like kicked off. It seems like, come on, I'm too old for this, but I'm too old. And then, they were, and then, and then nothing ever happened. But that's, that's him in a nutshell. But he knows how to get under your skin. The like, same way when Ellis Genge plays against Sinks, he knows how to ride Sinks up, like pulling his shirt up, showing his darb and all this kind of stuff. Like, I just love it. They just watch too much TV. But they're not actually... I mean, I don't know about Genji, but I don't think Sinks is like a massive scrapper. I just think he's quite funny. He plays on the edge. And of course, he is a big physical guy. Like, he's really strong. Yeah, him and yeah, he's yeah. teamed up with Marla. Like, Marla's put him under his wing in the gym. And those two just train together. And it's like a, it's, it's like a, like a uh, you know, Eddie Hall kind of who can lift <laughs> the biggest weights. And all we have, Flipping if you ever out. want to compliment Sinks, all we have to say is we actually get him on the show, actually. I would love go, that. It'd be great, mate. Your back, your back is looking massive. And he's like, is it? Is it? And he grows about 10 feet tall. <laughs> if you go, oh, he sinks, you're looking a bit small, mate. That's it, he's gone. He's one of those players that Eddie talks about having shown the love to, and uh, and he gets the response for it. Yeah, um, he's one of those guys that he, you know, he, I mean, sometimes when we've done a scrummaging session, I'll go, come on, sinks, come on, mate, you know, like motivate him as flankers are supposed to do, because scrummaging is just so boring. Which is, is, is <laughs> Stay that, awake. It hasn't even changed. Since I've been playing, I do the same thing every time, yet they make it sound so complicated. So all I'm there is to motivate. And Six just turns around and starts like trash talking to me or like trash talking about something else, like stuff that doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. And it confuses me. I'm like, Six, what are you talking about? He's like, they don't pay me a big money. They don't pay the big money. I'm like, what are you talking about, you <laughs> fool? Just shut up and scrummage. Right, we need him on the show. Hold on tight. You're watching the House of Rugby on Joe, together with Guinness. Um, we're, we're sort of, we haven't actually got into some of the individual performances. <laughs> Of who English players. Well, you, 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 where do you want to start? Mako, man of the match. Henry Slade, Mako two tries. Was Farrell. Amazing. Fa- uh, Slade, 
you know, I was a bit worried that he played so well for Exeter and he hadn't really ever put it was on. Was it the, the day he came him. of age? Some suggest. I'm not sure whether it's the day he came of age. I think fi- you know, finally it it was a game where he got into it. I think all the other games just haven't really gone his way, whether suit you know uh whether playing with Manu suits him or whatever allows him to have a little bit more freedom. I don't know, he d- uh, the defensive Setup obviously worked for him uh, in terms of the intercepts that he got throughout the game, but um, yeah, he had he had a great game. Johnny May, I thought, was outstanding. So tidy. Yeah, just in you terms know, of th- the nuts and bolts. I, I would say yeah, one of Johnny's weaknesses probably is defensive setup, but with this new, whether it is a new setup and how they do defensively, it seems to work for him. Sometimes he gets out of position when when he's played in the past and gets into that no man's land territory that didn't happen on the weekend one of Johnny Wilkins's um, <laughs> weaknesses is he's not sure where he is <laughs> yeah that's the yeah, forgets he's playing rugby half yeah, the time yeah, well exactly yeah. but he was did, he was did unbelievable did you see the photo of him in the changing room afterwards no all the Leicester boys got Got together and did the photo, and he, he yeah, 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 like, yeah, like Bugs Bunny. He, he is, he is, he is he, but you know what? I think, um, he's like, incredible. Like, what, what you know, what obviously the way he <laughs> operates, he's just he's mad, but he's he's such a nice guy, yeah, uh, and um. You know, he, he's a great team guy, but he's completely mad. And yeah. but to watch him play like he did, and to offer that dimension, he chases things like you wouldn't believe. Like he looked rapid. Mate, there's so I mean, many no, times. Quick, he looks yeah. quick. There's quick. so many times in like training <clears throat> where he he's like someone's kicked the ball, and he's chased it, and he's just like runs so fast that he just runs straight into a golf buggy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or like or like or like flown over a barrier, or like. <laughs> You know, like literally, like Forrest Gump. You have yeah. to hold up a sign, like "Stop!" <laughs> and he stops. Stop, Johnny. Yeah. Stop. He, he, um, yeah, just the way he chased all those kicks, and also that, the very fact that you took everything in the air, though, didn't he? Yeah. Bar one, bar one, I think. Yeah, yeah I th- you know, he. Uh, but again, that comes down to I thought craft. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, Johnny's one of the hardest trainers around there, and he was the guy that I always used to train with because obviously he was a lot younger than me and he was faster than Similar me. Similar speeds, I was going to say. Faster than me. So I would always train with that guy, make sure I would, could push him as yeah. well. Make sure, you know. So he... He is so, but yeah, he is so random off the field. Like, he's so literally. professional. Isn't yeah, he? unbelievable. Like, so like, every day he'll do forty-five minutes to an hour of stretching. Yeah, yeah. But every he, single day. Do you know he walks incredible. around. This is, is like his setup. He walks around with the game ready, which is like an icing machine, he, which he bought himself. Yeah, yeah. we've all bought them himself. Oh, if you're a professional, sorry. cost a fortune. <laughs> go, I, I like wrote to Gamer. Is like, please yeah. have a discount. They're like, no. Yeah. It's like if LeBron James has got, we don't need. We don't need. We literally don't need a tweet from you. I was like, damn you. It's a game ready. Take like something called a Norma Tech, which is like compression, yeah. uh, something else, and his stopwatch. And all he, all, he he's always around. Beep, 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 yeah. beep, beep, beep. Minute swap stretch side. this, swap side, minute stretch. On, and he's like meticulous. And the la- he, lads. He could possibly be a serial killer as well. Yeah. The, but the lads are yeah, building yeah. a team actually, those aren't we? Yeah, after last yeah, week, yeah, yeah. yeah but you well, remember, t- yeah, yeah, Joe, yeah, Joe Smith and him would get on very well, I think. But yeah. you know, um, but the thing is, he's so <laughs> meticulous that the lads wind him up like he had these, uh, <laughs> he had these inner soles in his shoes, orthotics, and the boys just used to nick his shoe. Like every day, Johnny would come in and just be like, "Lads, has anyone got my notebook? Has anyone got my game <laughs> ready? Has anyone got my trainers?" I don't know who was nicking it, but people were r- mercilessly stealing his stuff. And someone stole his his orthotics and just never gave them back. And he developed like some horrific, like some condition with his foot. Like we get the boys gave him some disability. <laughs> that really upsets me. I know. That's bullying I, in the workplace. Wait, I, the thing is, I, but John is is that was John it you? No, no, no. Because John, I don't indulge in any of that nonsense. I know you think I don't do pranks, I don't do any of that stuff. Uh, and, and, and Johnny always comes, have you seen that? I said, no, mate. And he goes, yeah, I remember you don't deal in this nonsense. I just oh, said, no. none of this nonsense. I just call it nonsense. I don't do any of that stuff because I fall Who for everything. It? Who was the thief in the night? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But, well, you know. chuck a couple of names out there. I mean, who are the characters? Well, Joe Marl has 100% well, got to be involved yeah, yeah, yeah. there so somewhere. We'll read it. They Marl. get on really well, don't they? Yeah. They're both just a little bit. Yeah, quirky. but it's like a love hate thing. It's like a love hate yeah. thing going on. But 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 you know the boys basically you know, Johnny's Johnny disabled at some point. Gave him flat foot or something. Poor Johnny May. Good to see he's recovered. <laughs> Anywhere else you want to go? Matt, um, we touched on Marrow. How big a loss? Uh, how was he well, playing? How well was he playing? And how big a loss? I, he did two? play outstandingly well in terms of just being a nuisance. <laughs> he's an absolute nuisance, and he put a lot of pressure on Conor Murray's kicking game. Um, as well as just being all over the place. He is, a, he is a loss, but we are fortunate that you've got Launchbury coming back and obviously Courtney came on and played as well as he did. 
Um, hopefully it's not too bad. Do we know how th- bad it is yet? Or? Uh, the thing next two games. I'll tell you what I thought. And I know we've obviously <clears> said that um, you know everybody played well, but I thought there was a couple of players. You know, you know when you watch uh, the game, and, and, and especially if you're on social media and in the papers, if you make a big hit or a big line break, then you've instantly had a good game. But the, the actual keynotes don't necessarily see what what you're at, you know, what what the the, the the details are. And I think that someone like George Cruz, I thought was brilliant. Yeah, I think you know, was. I thought defensively, he put in a lot, a lot of a lot of hits and was very physical, probably yeah. more uh, more physical than I've seen him before. And I thought he was outstanding. I thought. Uh, Mark Wilson yeah, Mark I thought Wilson. was brilliant did you hear the line about Mark Wilson no I was a brilliant um, Owen Slot picked it up he said that they were it was after one of the phenomenal sets of English defence and a Pils, um, Wilson they were all in a, all the England forwards were in a huddle and Wilson said god damn this is good fun or something like aloof and off the cuff oh, really in, and, and Owen Slot's take was it, it's great to see players who are just enjoying yeah. the moment. You'd have, you'd have said I, shut up again. I, I, <laughs> you were like, don't wow. ever, I ever. really like that. I, I can't remember like, exactly what I was. Don't ever speak like an yeah. American. I think... Uh, you just praise Sinclair uh, for I it. I think that was the, sort of the, the game. Sick there was a lot of people who played well but flew under the radar because there was a lot of standout performance as well. Yeah. But there wasn't anyone who made a howling mistake. Obviously, we went through a little penalty 25 minutes where we let, let them back <clears> into the game. And just how we then came out the back of that and scoring before half time, I thought, you know, whether whether Mako scored or not is irrelevant. But the way that we then turned it around and then came out second half and reaffirmed what we'd we'd, do, we'd done all the way through the first half was but a huge. I, I think if you if you were going to watch it back and look at a couple of things, I, obviously the, the physicality in defence, but I the the speed of our second man to get to a breakdown. Yeah. To stop them stealing yeah. the ball, which was a yeah, massive problem right. at the start yeah. of last year, yeah, was which right. was which was awesome. And and Tom Curry, Mark Wilson, uh, all the forwards um, did that incredible. Jamie George, I thought, was, yeah. I thought again, he was more physical than I've seen him yeah. before. All of those guys, and that's the difference. Those are the little details that people don't yeah. see because I don't think I remember Tom Curry got a turnover, Marrow got a turnover. Yeah, we had we we turned them over I, eight times. I, they, we only had two turnovers. Two which turnovers, is, which is unheard of in a. In an England, in an, against, against Ireland, Ireland. Yeah. and that's why I thought someone like Mark Wilson did so well was getting getting over the ball, and that's the thing that people don't necessarily capture the headlines. But that's the, those bits when they're right, yeah. then it sets the whole team up to perform really well. And people talk about the big game plan bits and what went well. It's like no, no, Lions people was great. People yeah. made their tackles. People were unbelievably physical, and actually they worked so Efficiency. well together. If someone bounced off someone else, there was another player there to clear it up. As yeah. soon as someone carried the ball, lads were diving over the top of each other to stop them stealing a ball, yeah. which is huge because if you give Ireland turnover, th- yeah. then they're so dangerous. But then, but then you, you, sort of, you suddenly eradicate the penalties, you eradicate the turnovers, then you are truly yeah. starving a team. Yeah. yeah. Uh, quick fire points. Oh, I'm told we, we haven't got that much longer to keep oh. talking Six Nations. Um, CJ Stander, 62 minutes with a double cheek and eye socket fracture. Oh, really? Really? How do you do that? <coughs> That's entering the Sam Burgess school. Do you, do you ever see that in the grand yeah, final? Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the yeah, half-time interview. Though, I it? love CJ as well. He's well, a top guy. Th- that was a big, the big thing. For the, the th- How much is that? When in- do you ever see... Irish, like CJ Stander, Devin Toner, Not back. walking off looking like they have been in a war mm. and they've lost. Yeah, not often. Normally it's the other way around. But so. I, th- I tell you what I thought was real, uh, very good when he came on, Sean O'Brien. Yes. Yeah. I he thought he looked very powerful. But he hasn't played a huge amount of rugby yeah. coming into this. But no, so you but can I can see why you don't gamble. Yeah, but I think he looked I think he looked good and obviously with CJ it'll be, it must be yeah, out now with that. Right, then course. then I That's think uh, you've got to start uh, Sean O'Brien. But I think as well we've obviously t- I always find it painful talking out one specific side and I think th- for this week in particular we deserve it. But actually, you know, I I can't wait to see what Ireland are going to do yeah. next because it is a tough massive, game. massive massive game. massive game on Saturday at Murrayfield yeah. against Scotland. Is yeah. it not? Yeah. Because if, if you lose that and you're low on confidence, you've lost some key players. Scotland, not their best performance against Italy, but certainly Finn Russell flying high, Stuart Hogg looking good, sharp. Good for 70 minutes. Yeah. It? I mean, that, 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 that is... I mean, no, no one's saying Ireland is a bad side off the back of one loss, but if one becomes two, 
then question how, how big do the questions become mm, well, no then. i mean i, I, I don't think that, I, I think re- listen logically there shouldn't be any questions you're like we've lost two games all right well that's yeah. it there aren't questions like what are you gonna what are you gonna question but, okay but everyone's sort of pointed towards the world cup we're starting to get our world cup contenders into position well, look, look, but it's not like, everyone wrote us <coughs> off last year then suddenly you pull, pull out but, but yeah, that's but my point I'm, I'm doing this i'm doing this in context of the world yeah. cup in seven no, months I, time. Doesn't, I, I think I, I think for the, for the World Cup, right? This is just my opinion. I, I haven't won a World Cup. I've been to, to, to two, and they both went really, really well. Um, <laughs> is um, is the, the, the form like winning a Six Nations and going into a World Cup is a nice thing, but it's not the be all and the end all. What's important is what I said at the start: is that actually going and learning, going through hell and learning yeah. how to finish off a game. Going behind and getting back, making decisions, turning, you know, being able but to... But Ireland have had all that. And yeah, yeah. They, they, they but I think that's everyone. fine. But I don't think it matters then. I, I think you, you okay. don't become a bad team it, overnight. It, what I was going to say is history will tell you that teams don't win World Cups unless they hit World Cup year looking good. You, you don't have teams that come from that. But that does lead us very nice. France. To fr- I, yeah, but they haven't won one. No, but they, they, they make they finals as an absolute shambles. And that does were, lead us on South to... South Africa doing well in 2007? Yeah, they won the Tri-Nations. They won the Tri-Nations, yeah. yeah. Mm. We weren't, if we'd have won that game. <laughs> if we'd have won two Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, but didn't win. Um, Mark Quato, keep your feet in. <laughs> <laughs> Was that dry? Sunshine? No. Oh. I don't know. Let's not go um, about that. Does anyone <laughs> want to talk about France or should we just rip them up and um, never discuss I want to talk about them. Yeah. What oh, in yeah. God's name was it, that it, as an 80 minutes? I do not understand... Right, why F- French teams, French coaches, or whoever it is, do not identify that there is a real issue with the mental side mm. of the game in France. That and also the substitutions. Like, do you know Varmahina Var- 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 didn't know he was captain at the end of the game? Wayne Barnes came up to him and said, what do you want to do with the penalty? And he said, I don't know, ask the captain. Wayne Barnes went, you are the captain. Yeah, but that, like, oh, really? Yeah, but that's what I mean. It's that, it's, 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 the one thing you've got is if you've got a side that are incredible, and I believe the French side, as individual players, are probably really? better than yeah. any other Northern Hemisphere players, as individuals. If you put them up against each other, there's a, I think ta- talent-wise, they're incredible. But if you don't have a massive game plan, if you don't have a load of structure, and you're doing everything on emotion, and the wheels come off... You've got nothing to turn around. And the, and the one thing I think is really important in professional sport is looking at the mental side, having those scenarios, focusing on your communication. But all those bits are missing. But so when the, when, when, so when the, when and they she, don't want them. Yeah, yeah, but that's what I mean. They don't want them, but they don't realise if someone came in and just gave them a little bit of a different mentality or, or dealt with a sports psychologist and started addressing it with the players, you looking at communication. My yeah, I my flair. but that's no, bullshit. <laughs> it's bullshit. It's like, keep the flair but get some structure and control around it because that French side and over the last, my, my entire career, French sides could have beaten anyone in the world. They could have won World Cups. Yeah. But it's like, you can't do everything on, you've got no structure, everything's on emotion, you've got nothing to fall back on. There's no one getting in a huddle going, right lads, let's go back to plan B. Well, they took off yeah. Parra and Girardo, the only two people that have been together. Balls. And Pickamals. That's what I mean. And it's and like... Bringing Serin, who is renowned as being, is it called, is he Serin? Baptiste Serra, yeah. Yeah, Serra. <laughs> Who's renowned for being a complete loose cannon into a game that you're winning 17 nil and it's just yeah, yeah but it's also then, the coaches. But then the problem is if you bring it, so if you bring like if you bring Australian or Kiwi coaches or whatever it is into France or an Anglo-Saxon coach, they get chucked out. Yes, because what happens is they bring all these structures in, they do everything, whatever. Every French team's got a load of like ex players that hang around those French teams, or you've got our senior players, and they all think they're politicians when the pressure comes on, and they all start having meetings and pointing fingers. Then they fire everyone, and they go back to mega French ways. Yeah. And mega French ways go really well for a while, and then and then the wheels come off that, and then they go around. It's a vicious circle. You, one of those those top fourteen sides or or the national side, if you just got the balance right with a little bit of structure and a little bit of sense and actually addressed it, going, we can't win under pressure, we can't do this. How do you go and we're working it? It would be the tra- biggest travesty yeah. in sport if they didn't sort it out because they're that good. I don't understand. I don't understand. I like Olivier Magne, one of the greats. Yeah, who said. Uh, this group of French players are associated with defeat, which has psychologically traumatised them, and they have forgotten that rugby requires responsibility and initiative. Oh. It's quite sort of poetic in some mm. kind of ways, isn't it? It's very oh, Olivier Man. Very Olivier Man. I, I, when I play, I, very good downhill skier. You know what? I, I Unbelievable I skier. Really? Yeah. Well, I think Unbelievable. He, he wasn't a bad player. The only, the only guy who's <laughs> hey, I think he skied for France. Is Jamie Cudmore. Oh Jamie God. Cudmore. You, skied for Canadian. Canada. Oh my! Literally. Hundred and eighty kilos. <laughs> feel sorry for because he skis fast um 
feel sorry for any five year old who's in a snake and yeah. takes the wrong turn. Well, there's Roland so, Diogenes right. with the Olivier old Olivier is so French, legs are very tight together, but just graceful. Down I've I never, I never forget. So, my first game, for, I was still at school and I got invited to play for Was, um, the, the first team. There's, they split the teams, half went to Bristol, half went to Claremont. I was starting seven against Claremont, <laughs> right? Against Olivier Magna. Tony Marsh, the centre, Mercer on, Mercer, Mercier at... at Gerald uh, Mercer on. Yeah, Mercer on at 10. And I honestly remember that. I was coming, I was in, uh, in the back line, and I was covering Olivia Mann, and he was going out wide. I was, like, chasing him down, right? Went to tackle him. He flicked a no-look inside pass to a winger who just ran in and scored. And I was like... Well, this is bullshit. I'm, out, I'm, I'm like, I'm so out my depth here. Hang on, I'm just going to my locker. Going yeah. back to double. Yeah. No, I definitely don't have that in my locker. Yeah, yeah. I looked at that. Went, I'm just going to go back to school. And that was that, that was when that was when Lawrence said to me before the game. He goes, right, if it kicks off, I want you there with me. And I was like, I was like, what do you mean? And he's like, if it kicks off, I want you there. So I was like, okay. Uh, Rougerie and Phil Greening have a fight. That's where uh, Phil did, got yeah, sued, right, for elbowing him in the throat. All kicks off. I see Lawrence hit someone. So I just panicked. This French prop turned around. I punched him. He didn't move. He turned around, punched me, and my brace just came off, flicked out my mouth. I, like, stumbled off. <laughs> it all just kicked off. My mum was, like, going mad in the stand. And after Lawrence was like, good, mate, good, good you were there. And I was like, this is bullshit. This is, I, 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 how am I supposed to play this rugby? I didn't know any of the calls. Got my pants pulled down by Olivia Manny. Got knocked out by a French prop. Welcome, that was it. Yeah. Welcome to Big And then time. I went back to Wellington. Yeah. And that went well too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I got A and 2 B's, History, Politics, English. You're welcome. Did you really? I did, yeah. What did you do? I applied to go to a University of Exeter to read uh, history. Oh, and I, great days. My best mate was down in Exeter. Was there? And, yeah, I, and I deferred the entry and I'm 17 and a half seasons later, I'm still... Still doing it. So. Wait, have you deferred? It? Can you go I've back? deferred. It. Can I go? Keep it furry. If there's any universities Next listening, year. can I get one? I tell you what I want. I was so rattled when Matt Dawson got um, a, a, an honorary doctorate honorary from, from from Bucks University. I, I want someone give me an honorary doctorate, and I'll literally make everyone call me doctor as well. <laughs> doctor of history. Doctor of Life? No, you're definitely geography type guy. Geography, <laughs> great at colouring in. Oh, With patches, all right, all right. <laughs> yeah, great at colouring in. Lo- Oxbow Lakes. Lo- loves a guess bit. Of, what, loves what, a bit of tweed in the patch. Guess what I did? It. Guess what I did at university? Uh, English literature. No. Um, don't know. David Beckham studies history of art. Yeah. Oh, have a day off. No, I did. Really? Yeah, yeah. History I did my of art. I did my uh, dissertation on the double portraiture of David Hockney. Really? Yeah. Tell you about it. I remember. We, I'll you, tell you about it sometime. Please, Please do. do. <laughs> <laughs> Preferably before bed. We'll Preferably it, before bed. Podcast. Can I call you before, 10 minutes before I need to go to sleep? <laughs> <laughs> David Hart. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, keep going. I'm fine, I'm fine. Yeah. Anything, anything on Wales? Oh, Warren Gatton said they've forgotten how to lose. Yeah, big call cool out. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Because I'll be like, yeah. if, if they lose, just call them up and go, do you I mean, remember now? I haven't seen all the game, but how bang average were they for 40 minutes? I mean, they were a sham. They were yeah, a sham. I mean, it was. It how was, many balls did they turn over, drop? Yeah. Uh, I know the, the conditions weren't great, but. Very impressive to dig themselves out of it, though. Oh, it, did they dig themselves out well, of it? Well, I mean. Yeah, I mean, this is a. Yeah, they, still, were, they were much better I, in the second I half. I still don't think you have an answer on how good Wales are at the moment because it was just. They were so bad in that first half, and then what, France were so bad. I mean, Uge? it was embarrassing. Word on Huger? There's a lot of people laughing at Jan Huger. Nah, I don't, I, I'd, ne- I'd never laugh at someone. Well, like it's that. off the back of the stamp. Nah, I, I, just, I just wouldn't. Like, you know, okay. It's like when Poitro balls that up and he wouldn't let anyone else on the bus. Yeah, in, uh, yeah but Uge stamped on the face of a player and, and has been sort of blacklisted from most rugby fans' good books as a result. Oh, really? Oh, I mean, two years. Was it but- Toulouse Bath? Yeah, Toulouse. But, yeah, when he did that fake dive as well. Yes. I just think I just think I think you he's a never, hell of a player. I just think you should but. never laugh at somebody making a mistake because, you know, everybody makes mistakes. That's why, even you know, if someone's late at the club, you just never go in too hard at them because at some point you'll be late. That's why I, I, the other day I was late and Heinrich Brousseau got very excited. And, and, I, and, I, and he was like, I could see him putting the knife in. And I, I said to him, I said, Heinz, you want to make sure you don't fuck up, pal? Because if you do, I'm going to attack you like a spider monkey, pal. <laughs> I'll he? be waiting. Not yet, but you Not will. I'll, we'll, and if, and even, the... even if they don't fuck up, you then do something, stitch them up, like take yeah. a tire off their car so yeah. they do yeah. fuck yeah. up, <laughs> and then you do get them. Um, but no, I think with the Wales thing, just yep. quickly, on a point about I actually think, you know, agree with Tins' point about not necessarily know how good they are as a side, but uh, players-wise individuals, if they can actually fire. I, I was, I was yeah. when I went on the line, so I was very um, 
really impressed by the, the, the talent of the Welsh players individually. Yeah. Yeah. You don't always get to see that. And actually, I was, you know, some of them I thought were, were, were awesome. I think Tipperick, he's probably one of the most skillful guys. Jesus, he was going to last 10 yeah, minutes. Yeah, he, he's he? one of the most skillful guys I've ever seen. They, they had a move where he gets to kick the ball. Like, you know, like there's, there's a Welsh move for the team where he, he does a ship over the top and stuff like that. And it's like... They're they a lovely have, bunch as Individually, well, yeah. they have got good players. I mean, it, but I don't think... I think this jury's still out on... And they play they play Italy, don't they, this week? So we don't yeah. really get to find out. That get a bit, bit of feedback. Um, anything on Scotland? I think well, seventy I think, minutes good. Yes, I mean Se- it, seventy minutes quality, and then yeah, whether they switched off or whatever. Um, Job done. I think they moved on to the fairness, Italy played well for the last ten minutes in terms of the way they kept the ball, but um, yeah, I just. I think job done. It's one of, you know Italy is always one of those tricky ones in terms of if you play well and spank them, everyone goes well. We expected you to spank them. Yeah. And if you so, no win if, game. If, yeah. You can't. You can't. You don't ever really come out with a positive. Mm. I can't wait for England to play Scotland. That's the only game I care about the Six Nations. Waiting a little Why, while. Because the last year. Yeah. That's what um, Billy was saying a few weeks ago, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. He, he, honestly, but when Billy and I had, we got back in the, the taxi on the way. The way home, and I know during that show, we I kind of talked about Billy in the way he plays. Kind of, God, he, yeah, I mean, ins- what, what a return, yeah, but uh, well, exactly. But the way when we were talking about it in, in the car on the way back, saying actually, he, he kind of inspires me, Billy, his attitude and everything else, and what he was talking about. And the one game he wants more than anything is that Scotland game. And I don't normally don't care who we play, but just one game, just because there was like a little scrap in the tunnel, there was a lot of stuff, there's a few things on social media, yeah. there's a few bits that even that like, scrap in the tunnel was that before the game, yeah, it was right. Will, was it yeah, Wilson? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's a, a lovely bloke right. off the field. Yeah, and he's a, a head absolute yeah, nutcase. Yeah. But he said, he said some things that he possibly shouldn't have said. But there's just uh, a bit. There's just right. a bit of spice. Like there's a couple of things that got that happened after the game. That if, I, say for example, I did that in, in the media, I reckon that was front page. It would be that yeah. bad. You'd never forgive me. I'd never be invited to the show. Yeah. Just sit, singing things and doing things. So I can't wait because whatever happens, it's going to be so physical. Like I love Scottish people. I love Scotland. I don't. I don't have anything against it, but just that one particular game, just because I think it was physical. I think we got out muscled in uh, Murrayfield. I think we, we, we got beaten at the breakdown. We got physically and every, beaten. Everything they did came off as well. Yeah, and I think we got physically beaten. We got schooled, and then everyone celebrated in our faces. And uh, bring it on! I was in the stands. So I was like everyone else. But I was like, <laughs> yeah, I was, sat, I was sat surrounded by a lot of ex Scottish players. Yeah, so that's my one ne- game. But never a comfortable place. Well, I think they're dangerous. You know, I think the thing about the Scottish side is that they're scoring tries, and they and they've got. They've got a real belief, and I think that they'll want that. You know, they're a, shit, re- they're a shit old bus team. They're going to yeah. put their game on the field, whatever they think, mm. and it's either going to work and they're going to be exceptional, or you know, you you <coughs> can find margins to take the ball off them if it if it doesn't go well. I think Finn <laughs> Russell, you look at Finn, you look at Finn Russell. You know, he he is amazing when everything's going right from on the front foot, but then there's sometimes where things don't go well for him and then he'll all, he'll try and create something out of nothing again yeah. to go, I'm going to make up for this mistake with something amazing and then that goes wrong and then it's, yeah, it's, exactly a, bit right. of a, spir- exactly it's a bit right. of a spiral but he, there's no doubting his talent and how good he is and, and how good that Scottish team could be and you think of the injuries they've got at the moment they're going to get a few people back over the tournament yeah you're going to be a good team but see what maybe happens maybe a value bet for a grand slam well, I don't know. see um, what happens this weekend bit of breaking news while we're on air mm. Elliot Daly has signed for Saracens. I didn't know, but I'm guessing. I don't know. Sorry? London Irish. <laughs> no, it's Saracens. But <laughs> <laughs> I say, that wasn't um, my um, I think okay, apparently, yeah. apparently it was the worst kept secret in the game. Yeah. Um, he's leaving Wasps mid-contract. Um, I'm sure there'll be lots of plaudits. Thank you, Elliot, and thank you for having me and all that kind of stuff. But a lot of people are saying it's about this training ground contract. Mm. I have to be very careful about this because... Uh, I got called up by someone from the rugby paper the other day and they asked me about this and they basically put the headline in there and I got some absolute ball bag from Broad Street Rugby Club <laughs> like who, who who messaged me. He got, he got, <laughs> yeah, he got, so, he got this bloke's an absolute nausea and he got really upset because <laughs> the question was, uh, is it to the facilities? And I trained at Broad Street when I was 17, 18, three England under 19s, uh, under 21s and I've been at WASP for, what was it, three years we were there? It is a great place, a great club, great facilities, great grassroots facilities. It is, if you're looking at a local rugby club, it has the best local rugby club facilities I've been to. I think it's fantastic. I'm just excited for Elliot to, to start a new chapter. And I think the training facility stuff, whatever. I don't know what's going on behind closed doors, but I know there's I think you've tiptoed around that very well. Time for this week's Guinness Perfect Pour. 
our weekly test in 119 and a half seconds, because that is how long it takes to... Paul the Perfect Pine Guinness. Guinness. Very good. Each week we try and set James a task which he attempts with varying degrees of success. We've moved away from quizzes, because that sort of wobbled a touch. You did pretty well with the Superhero 15. Uh, this week we have given you another blank canvas, and you have come up with... Uh, Sort of 60s, 70s, and 80s TV stars. Right. So well, it's you a, it's a big star, genre. Well, you, you said just stars, but it, it I was it, pushed I, through as presenters. Well, I thought it was 80s TV presenters. So, so let's get let's knuckle down to it. You yeah. basically, once again, have done fuck all research mm. or anything. So mm. you've added to the <coughs> genre to make sure that you can yeah. make it up on the spot. Yeah, of course. Right. Whereas, but actually, the for two, the viewers the at home, geeks and how much rugby have I talked about this week and how uh, knowledgeable yeah, you have, I sound? You've just been incredible. Relative. Thank you. I think your rugby chat's improving a touch. Thanks very much. Condescending wanker. He played the Legends game. How good that? Did you win? Uh, no, we lost. Um, oh. uh, yeah, I only played... 65, 62. It was good. I don't know what was okay. it. 65, 62. Oh, my goodness. Um, um, we should just reference, actually, here, you and your glory days. For those who are listening, we've got... Yes, num numero uno. Producer Cat Cat says you look quite like Steve Bruce. I think there's an element of Mr. Incredible Steve in there. Steve Bruce. Fuck you, Si. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Producer Si is roaring with laughter at, that, at the abuse and at bull bag. You know, the producer who's on point when you're talking about the, those kind of things. Is topics. that the legend that is Dennis Hickey trying to tackle Yeah, me? I would give that as Dennis Hickey, actually, yeah. Let's get back to the Guinness Perfect Pool. 190. Yeah. And a half seconds because that's how long it takes to pour the perfect pint of Guinness. Uh, your topic this week is James, 60s, 70s, and 80s TV stars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you have done some work. Oh, just now. Oh, yeah. I, I did. Don't want to hear ego. Right, off we go. It's the, the, the note was started at 8.59. Right, okay. We're now whatever. Uh, 9.59. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. Okay, so, uh, yeah, uh, no references to anyone associated with op Operation U Tree. No, I can't yeah. do that. I can't make that agreement. That, blank, that blanks out your entire... That's my entire team. <laughs> We're a family show. Um, okay, uh, uh, so uh, Prop, uh, the guy from Porridge, I uh, can't remember what his, um, his Ronnie character... Ronnie Barker. Ronnie Barker. Uh, Hooker the, Prop. The guy from Porridge. No, but I can't what remember what his character's name is. Um, oh. Uh, Ronnie Barker. Don't yeah. know. Yeah, Producer well, Ronnie Barker, fine. So um, Porridge. Poirot, uh, Hooker. Intelligent. Yeah, meticulous. Uh, would have li would literally practiced. Hard, hard enough. Would fight hard enough. Poirier, yeah, ruthless he was. Ruthless. Okay, yeah. Look, um, yeah. And uh, I, you know the guy from the TV series Pie in the Sky, Richard... Um, Griffiths. Richard Griffiths. With Nell and I. With Nell and I. Yes, very good. Yeah, my you. boys, my <laughs> boys. <laughs> yeah, that, that's literally you growing up. Are you a up. grower? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, the finest wine in Christendom. Yeah. Right? Um, so, yeah, for him. And then Basil Faulty at second row. Erratic. Um, Rational, but, but, yeah, yeah. emotional, very emotional. Definitely not on the French. He's French not, not going to make those uh, key yeah. decisions um, at the right Richard time. Richard Madeley, uh, keeping uh, it in the family. Right. In the second row? Yeah, in the second row. Yeah. Richard yeah. Madeley has you, to be at 10. Th you think no, he can no. be in the boiler house? Yeah, yeah, we'd show up. He's, he's, from, um, he's from Manchester in that way, I think, originally. Or like well, North that hair. Way. You don't want that hair in a scrum cap. Yeah, but you, you want, want a tape round it. You put tape round it. A bit of a bouffant setup. It'll look good. I promise you, I've thought it through. Have you asked him about that? No, funnily enough, I haven't. I rang him about that. Would he like to be in the second row of my fantasy team? No, it sounds a bit odd. Hello, Richard. I haven't spoken in a while. Would you like to be like... He'd just go, beep. Well, Richard, <laughs> hello. <laughs> hello. It certainly would do if you put him in the second row. Um, yeah, exactly. oh, just get him in the second row. Uh, Del and Rodney, six and seven. Del, yeah, like great him. at stealing things. Very good. Yeah. I like we've done yeah. that. Um, Rodney? No. Rodney. I'm a bit worried about Rodney on the open side. <laughs> yeah, I think he's going to no, Rodney's bullied. at six. Think, Rodney's at six. Yeah, so Dell's at seven because he's the, the okay. Yeah, Jack is still going to be uh, getting bullied a bit. Yeah, but Rodney. Rodney's all about the heavy lifting. We'll be millionaires. Yeah, yeah. Rodney's always he's always got the fire damage briefcases that he's carrying around him. <laughs> true. Uh, Russ Abbott at number eight because he's nice. quite a big bloke. And he had a big jaw. So, yes, true. Um, Strong. Love Joy at nine. Good. He knows an antique. Bit of a wheeler dealer. Quite good. Chirpsy. Oh, yeah. Um, no, I like that. Inspector Morse at ten. Very good to call. I like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Andy no, can... Peters at eleven. Strong. Yeah. And he'd have with to. Ed the Duck or with not? Ed the Duck. With Ed the Duck. With Ed the Duck on one hand. Yeah. Um, uh, very good nick nowadays, Andy Peters. He was. Yeah. You remember he, was, he did one of your things, didn't he? Men's yeah, he Health did, Cover yeah, thing, yeah. yeah. Um, be, he doesn't age, stuff. Andy Peters. No, he does not. He made a pact with the devil and he doesn't age. Um, Morecambe and Wise, 12 or 13. Yeah. Uh, you got Crash Ball with Morecambe and uh, I can never tell which one's which, but. Um, 
Morecambe uh, was the big one. Ernie yeah. Wise was the little Yeah, one. fine. Ernie Wise is the kind of gas on the, on the 13. Uh, Anna Carice at 14, because she's fucking running everywhere I all the that. time. I love that. <laughs> Literally <laughs> flat out. Producer Cy roaring with yeah. laughter of approval. Now, let, let, let me have a think quickly at, at 15. Okay. Who else in... You, you guys carry on. Uncle Albert out. from yeah. Only Fools at Horses. No, no, no. We're all playing with a totally yeah. different rules here. Yeah, we are. So we, we're pretty much playing off the same. Yeah, I, I, we're playing off the same so teams. So I've got Les Dawson at one. Okay. Um, Jim Bowen for his errors. Okay. Two. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's very good. Uh, I've got Ronnie Barker at, at three. Uh, Matthew Kelly, stars in the eyes. Yeah. Guy. Uh, Stephen Fry, also in the That's very house. good. Yeah, I like that a lot. Height, yeah. wisdom, you know, bamboozle people, eloquence. With knowledge. Yeah. yeah. Great line out caller. Yes. It's just understand. Al- algorithms that oh, no one yeah, man could got... crack, not even Borthwick. Uh, Dusty Bin, Ted Rogers, is it? Three, two, one, Dusty Bin. Oh, yes. Likes to get messy at six. Good. Um, hangs around with all the bins. Uh, Peter Duncan from... Uh, Very good. That's a brilliant shout. Uh, I thought, I thought Duncan Dares. I thought my 15. <laughs> uh, if we're going to panic okay. and, and right. edit okay. it. Welcome back. Uh, Bruce Forsyth. Because, oh. you, you know, unbelievable. To turn feet. his hand to most yeah. great feet. Rangy feet. runner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good yeah. communication skill. Keep your back. <laughs> That's quite good. <laughs> Thank you. Because he's in good nick. Are there? And Andy Peters at eight. Yeah. Obviously, Ronnie Corbett at nine. Yeah. Little wizard. Yeah. Like yeah. Um, Chris Terrence got all the answers at 10. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I like that. Um, <laughs> uh, I need my 12 to be all over the place and a little bit quirky, so Benny Hill's at 12. Uh, <laughs> 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 and he, he looks yeah. always like he's running into Very good. fast forward. Bob Monkhouse at 13. Um, I've got Roy... W- <laughs> oh, no, hang on, that's wrong, isn't it? No, Benny Hill's on the wing, sorry. Bob Monkhouse and Roy Walker. Be- <laughs> no, Say that what Mr. Walker. Chips oh, is so doing. Good. I love... We've got Chris Evans on the other wing. Is that and the I've Indian got... version you just did? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Bob weird. Holness. Oh, Bob Jesus. Holness. That's so we, we've actually played a very similar game. Was it Bob Holness from Blockbusters? I, yeah, yeah. I've got what 80s, have a 80s, Bob. 90s TV presenters. Jimmy Tarbuck, Jim Davison and Roy Chubby Brown as my front row. Oh, Roy Chubby. Dirty. That Wait, is, racist. That is Dirty and racist <laughs> yeah. front row. Do I need that, to re-record that? Yeah, that? Well, only if you shit your pants you're like a little yeah. baby. But if you yeah, but if you want to stick with it and be a modern oh, man, then roll with it. That's a great front, front row. Yeah, well, yeah, I have. Yeah, 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 I get that. That's a, that is that's a good front a, row. That's a 76 Lions front row. Uh, Bob Monkhouse Wait, and Bruce Forsyth. Right? 76, 74. Uh, 74. 74. Uh, the Invincibles. Bob Monkhouse and Bruce Forsyth in the second row. I think that's a lovely educated pair. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, A yeah. lot of line-out options there as well. I've gone Bob Holness at six. Oh. Uh, Jim Bowen not at seven because really, I like really a bit of that physical specimen. No, but I'm sort of thinking a, a wide rangey, like Laurent Caban. I know Caban was a seven, but sort of you're a all, thinking man's back rower. Your seven is always Laurent Caban. Yeah, yeah, I love Laurent Caban. Yeah, yeah, I love Laurent Caban. It was, it was, I'm going to shock you. I have no idea who Laurent Caban is. Oh, grow up. Uh, I've, gone Mac- I've, gone Ma- <laughs> I've gone Matthew Kelly at eight with a, s- a sort of Merv the Swerve hairstyle, oh, well, flamboyant. Yeah, who's going to come at? He's going to yeah, come yeah, out. Well, 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 there you go. See, he's a comedian. Whatever you need. Tonight, he's got Alex, the game for every. He's got the game for every scenario. Yeah, tonight, Alex, I'm going to be yeah. Lawrence Delalio. There you Big go. Big fake jaw, yeah. massive forehead. <laughs> Les Dennis at nine with Dale Winton at ten. <laughs> oh. Quirky. Quite literally. I just thought that the Gavin Henson school of look <laughs> good, play what good. You fucking mug. Ainsley Harriet on one wing. Love it. Chris Tarrant on the other. Reeves and Mortimer in the centres. I think oh, that's I a lovely yeah, centre yeah, combination. Yeah, yeah. And I've got a little left field fullback. I've got Gordon Burns from the Krypton Factor. There you go. I think the lesson from this is that we have to do the same. No. Th- we, you, do, you like just random 15s. I, I, when I put into the WhatsApp group what we should do, I literally listed Thank God people. we didn't go with what you were suggesting in the WhatsApp group. I don't think any of us would ever go to air ever again. <laughs> Favourite porno stars? <laughs> oh, I don't know why I said porno <laughs> stars. 70s porno. Ron Jeremy would make a very right. good tight head. Yeah. yeah, he would do, yeah. Jenna <laughs> Jam- Jameson at number eight. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think on that bombshell. Let's, let's just try and get back for next week. Yeah. Uh, we're not, um, not let's come back for next week. We're a little bit edgy. Ooh, everyone fucking have a lie down. Like, it's fine. Quick predictions oh, for this weekend. <laughs> no! Oh, Jesus. Oh, oh this Jesus. is so bad, yeah. Do you mind if you see yourself off air? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> see you all. I'll be, we'll I'll be outside you. if you need me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Should we finish the prediction? England, France? Yeah, uh, England win. Yeah. Uh, Italy, Wales? Uh, where is what? it? It's, uh, Stadio Flaminia. Yeah, Wales. Wales. <laughs> <laughs> Such a big difference. Yeah. And Scotland, Ireland. Ireland. Murrayfield. Ireland. He wants to say Go on, it. You've got to say it. Ah. You have to say it. I'm going to go Scotland. 
Oh, he he came with humility. God. He left with the fuck Sorry. you, Gene. Sorry, you think that me saying dodgy 70s presenters was bad. This whole thing's owned <laughs> by Irish people. <laughs> he keeps insulting the Irish. Say goodbye to the nice people. You won't be back next week. Goodbye. <laughs> It's been a lot of fun. I think we've, we've toured a bit, haven't we? Yeah. yeah, we've gone around the houses. You happy? You're in a better mood than when you arrived. Yeah, but I always, I always turn it on when the camera's when you got, on. Yeah, I know you I was do. just a bit stressed today. You're one of those red light whores. No, it's because it takes me two hours to get here. It's just, you know. And I just we, put, we put you in a better mood? Yeah, you cheered me up. That's what we're here for. You're a bit worried me that I've been a bit, you know, controversial. I'll have to get Chloe to listen to it and just give me some feedback. <laughs> I love it, though. We, we, we come at you with the, oh, I'm not sure about that. And you're like, no, 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 no. And then we go off yeah. and you're like, oh my God, have I already yeah. said that? No, I don't care. I honestly don't care. I'll never apologise. Fuck Um on that bombshell that is it for this week thank you very much indeed for watching and for listening to the House of Rugby as always and making us I'm not sure we are the biggest rugby show this week but we're, we're doing pretty well we are producer side says we are can I tell you something and we're extending the lead apparently can I tell you something go on you know Murray does an amazing impression of you does he <laughs> we've got to get Murray on to finish off the show one day it's amazing I think Murray needs to be sacked. <laughs> <laughs> He's the kind of guy, aren't he? Like, I'm yeah. the alpha, like, real aggressive. You're such a beta yeah. that you'd write a poison yeah. pen letter yeah, and get exactly. sacked. Exactly. It works, though. <laughs> of it it works. He's great at knifing in the back. Yeah, he'd get back with, with his quill and his English Tory party. <laughs> um, we are a YouTube show and a podcast as well. Please leave us a review as it really helps. And there is a new show coming from Joe this week that launches on Thursday. TKO with Carl Frampton. Is it? Yeah. In association with 32 Red, I would have thought. In a, yeah, but you're very right. Mainly because their set is on the other side of the camera. But um, <laughs> the, uh, yes, aiming to do for boxing what Hask has done with rugby. Is that a positive or a negative? I'm not yeah, sure. I'm not entirely sure. I'm a little Good. bit put out there. You can yeah, download and watch from Thursday, so subscribe the now. The greatest show that we've ever had. Hask was nowhere to be seen. That is very true. Our numbers last week were massive. Yeah, I think it's because you've got the Irish crowd as well. Right. That is true. Don't don't get too carried away, Labs. Because I nothing thought, to do with boots. Does it hurt? Did you get Did you get FOMO in Dubai? A little bit. No, I was in Dubai. I know how much it was nice. Training on the beach. Yeah, DJing in the club, going oh, around yeah. getting in a drift car, You're doing something with GoPro. Yeah, I desperately fly over to Ireland and hear Tin sing, which I've already heard. Boom, we've checked a million times because every time I have to get yeah, it was very bus. good. That's He's very viral. good. That's going viral this week. Who else does that? Someone else does Vanilla Ice. Did you do Vanilla? Uh, Johnny May. Johnny May does. Vanilla. Does he? Unbelievable. Yeah. And he also does that alphabet, the alphabet yeah. rap thing. He's, he's un- What's the alphabet rap? Uh, it's, uh, I can't, I can't <laughs> hear it. Can't, no, no, <laughs> yeah, no. That's my daughter's rap. learning. Yeah, that's as close to rap as you get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, crap. Uh, yeah, uh, Johnny May. Unbelievable yeah, for the yeah. nice. He's amazing. Good man. He used to play the drums. Because they're good at stuff like that. Yeah, they yeah. remember stuff. Producers, I said forty-two times. Please rap. Right. Okay. See you next week. Don't forget about TKO with Carl Frampton. Um, good luck to all the teams in action on Saturday and Sunday at Twickenham. That's it from the three of us. We'll be seeing you. You've been watching the House of Rugby on Joe, together with Guinness. Drink responsibly. Visit drinkaware.co.uk for the facts.